and the same parties are involved in signing it. So something is happening here. And the interesting thing is, this is what's happening in credentials. You're having all the alternative providers writing the same kinds of statements, but writing them in different ways that may or may not affect their recognition. So what we wanted to dive into was really what this means. And what we found is that we have to look into, first of all, the quality of the statement. So what stands behind the quality of what's written in the credential? And secondly, the quality of the medium. And by the quality of the medium, you remember we defined the credential as a documented statement. So, quality of the statement and quality of the document it is written. And what we found is that there are five elements of quality that can apply to each tool. Distinctiveness, authenticity, accessibility, exchangeability, and portability. Don't worry, I won't leave you with the keywords. So, Let's talk about distinctiveness first of all. Distinctiveness is something which, let's say, has been referred to quite a bit by things. So if we think of the quality of the statement, what do we mean when we say the statement has to be distinct? It means it has to represent a specific, identifiable, and measurable experience, skill, or fact. So you have to identify the specific learning that took place, and you have to identify the specific person that holds that credential. Nothing particularly world-shattering uh, there. The quality of the medium means that the medium needs to allow for the storage and display of the statement, as well as any and all associated meetings. And there we already start to come into some differences. So your traditional degree was not able to hold a lot of meeting data. So they invented a diploma supplement to go with it. A digital degree can hold a practically unlimited amount of metadata if you choose to, and it can even do so with structured uh, namespaces and so on. The next part we come to is authenticity. And authenticity is a big concern in big business at institutions. And what we're talking about authenticity is basically, is the certificate secure and is the certificate verified? When you break down those concepts, though, it means that the statement needs to contain enough information to verify, first of all, when, where, and by whom it was issued. Because if you know where, when, and by whom it was issued, then you can go back and, let's say, verify that that transaction took place at that time. You also want to be able, ideally, to trace and reproduce the conditions under which it was issued. What do we mean by this? Typical example is these scandals we've been hearing around Europe about various ministers who plagiarized their theories. When there is a when there is a claim about it, the evidence still exists. You can go back, you can actually check that degree again, and you can reproduce the process that led to the issue of the credential. So because the evidence was there, we could continue to verify the authenticity even of the process. And there should be a time element to it. You should have the ability to issue the credential for a limited time. This is typical with professional certifications, for example. And just as in the example of the degree, it should be possible to revoke it if for some reason it isn't valid. Now, if you look in the medium, there are quality aspects of the medium that allow you to do this. First of all, it should only allow an issuer to create a certificate. Now, there's all sorts of tricks that have been used for that over the years. I mean, special types of papers, special seals, special stamps. In digital, it's easy to just use a PKI key, which only the issuer has, and that way only the issuer can issue a certain type of credential. It should ideally be tamper proof and edit proof. It's arguable whether anything is truly tamper proof, but the higher, the, the more tamper proof it is, the better quality it has. You should be able to store or link to the information required to verify all of this, preferably automatically. And, and this is an important one for usability, for the media, the media itself should be able to display its validity status. So if I have a, you know, one of the typical security paper, holographic, whatever, whatever degrees, 
If I try and edit that, it's going to be immediately visible that I've tried to mess with it. If I do the same on a digital document, if it fails any of the validation checks, or if somebody's trying to tamper with it, ideally, or the medium itself should be able to give me a big red mark that this is invalid. If I'm able to do that, the credential is in itself more valuable. Accessibility is something which is straightforward. Widely spoken language in terms of the statement or easy to read graphical format, the open badges philosophy. In terms of the medium, interoperable medium and a widely used and or open format. Now the interesting thing about paper, for example, is that paper is 100% interoperable. Everywhere except paper. Um, but on the other hand, the widely used and open format, that depends on how you write it. On the other hand, if you look digital, interoperability is more of a challenge, because just you have one doesn't mean somebody else can read it. So even though digital can make things a lot more automated, they doesn't necessarily make it more interoperable. Um, exchangeability is a big one. A lot of effort has been put into ECTS, modules, so on and so forth. And when we looked at it from a quality perspective, our argument was that if you build a credential to be modular, and modular means you can divide it into smaller parts, or you can put smaller parts together to make bigger ones. The more modular it is, then you can combine it in different ways for different purposes which means you can use the same credential for more use cases. And if the purpose is recognition, you remember the equation at the beginning, then it also instantly becomes higher quality. So in terms of quality of the statement, we talk about the modular, and we also say that it should be convertible into other types of credentials. Typical example here, you can convert 180 ECTS into a degree. You have 180 credentials of one type, and you've converted them into one of another type. It increases usability. For the medium, this means ideally you should be able to create relational links by the medium. In paper, that might be just putting all your credits on a file. Digitally, you can do it better here probably. And it means that it should the tech should allow you to do this conversion process. And finally, portability. Now, we are using portability a little bit different than, say, the Bologna dependency user term. By portability, we literally mean can you put it in your pocket and carry it around. Quality of the statement. Is the statement document owned by you? You all know GDPR, you own your personal data, etc., etc. But there are still universities in Europe who they keep the only original copy of your certificate, and they will only give you certified copies. So are you owning and controlling your data, or aren't you? And I think we can all agree that your grades are about as personally identifiable as it gets. Um, quality of the medium, it means that the medium should allow for the user to physically possess the credential in a place of their choosing. So the quality element, again, if you get it on paper, it's easy to have it. You can store it in your safe, or under your bed, or put it on your wall, or whatever. Digital, though, if I only make your credential available on my university cloud and you're not allowed to download it, then am I really physically possessing my credential? And also, from a usability perspective, has the shareability by the user. You put all of this together and you get an idea of, let's say, the complexity of credentials. And all of this is not just theoretical work. So, what we talk to you about, we can call quality principles or quality criteria. Quality principles and criteria can be used to build standards. And once you have those, then it makes sense to actually start building tech for this. In terms of why are we so interested in big tech, it's very simple. The EU is building it right now. So, part of the digital education is actually a European framework for digitally signed credentials. And it's very easy to say we're going to build a framework for digitally signed credentials. But our postulation is that that framework will have to take 
this level of complexity into account to actually serve the real purposes that are needed by education. And the other thing is that if you look at all of this, a lot of you are going to be saying my university has said probably most of the things we said in the statement, and at, le and at least half of the stuff we talked about in quality of the media. Why are you talking about this? Why do you need this? And the answer I would give you is, is this isn't so much for the universities per se, but it's for all the alternative potential providers. Um, one of the stories I, we talked about, for example, modularity. Um, MOOCs started as completely non-formal, no certificates of any kind, etc., etc., and they've slowly gained more and more of these quality criteria. They got more formal assessments, they got more formal certificates, they got identity verification before you did the exam. They've now started doing nano degrees where they modularize them. And so somehow they're actually building onto this and enhancing the quality of the criteria that are attached to it. So to some extent, we're hoping that this will form the framework of a roadmap of where we want to go, both in terms of standards and in terms of the tech. So I'll stop there for the moment. And first of all, do you have any questions? I'd be happy to answer any questions. And then afterwards, we have a little bit of work to make and help you understand the concepts. Um, when you're talking about portability, uh, we often, uh, uh, we are users of the platforms where we put some credentials like digital badges, so we depend on them. Uh, sometimes they do not work, like open badges, you know, uh, so when you have Creedly, you have a badger or something. So, uh, how to make it happen that we do not depend so much on the platforms because they can be here today and not tomorrow, when, when, what can we do without credentials? Uh, well, I have a whole bunch of answers for you, uh, depending on who you ask. Uh, but we'll look at one approach for it this afternoon, which we're developing ourselves. But if you look at the landscape, GDPR tells you you have to uh, now include export of all your data. Mm -hmm. So all these platforms basically have to, by law, I know it's going to take a decade to do it, but by law they should basically put the downloads of all of them. Secondly, when we talk about portability of credentials, you can think of something as simple as a digitally signed PDF. A digitally signed PDF has the verification and security inbuilt into the document itself and is self-verifiable. Uh, if you want to look at some fancy solutions people are doing, there are people, there are at least three different companies who are actually putting this on the blockchain so that you can have like independently verifiable decentralized blockchain credential networks. So there is a few ways to do it, but it isn't very useful for if you're a company, because I said, honestly, I don't need an online platform to store my credentials and send them to my employer. Um, as soon as you take this away from them, it really messes with their business model to some extent. I know we will finish the blockchain in the end, so. Uh, no, you need to try to. Um, further questions? Okay. So if not, we are actually going to ask you to try and use some of these concepts. Um, we have two basic questions for you. For three different types of credentials, what are the quality features a typical credential already has in this area? And how could the quality of such a credential be improved? So the idea is that we are going to ask you to use the framework to first of all look at a bachelor's degree from a European university that's made up of credits and awarded by a paper certificate. Is this a quality credential? Is it not? How quality is it? And most importantly, what are the deficiencies of such a credential? And how can we make it better? Question one. Um, question two, and the idea is we'll ask just three groups to spend about ten minutes, one on each case. Case two, a MOOC certificate. Awarded by the Red Cross, so we could, and which is issued as an open badge. 
Again, what is the quality of such a certificate? And how can we improve its quality? And the third one, a micro masters issued by a US university. And the credential is issued as, let's say, a signed, scanned document PDF. But it's like has been written, it's been signed, and it's scanned geoscience. And what we're looking at is both the quality of the statements in these and the quality of the media. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, printing has been challenging in this field. So we're going to have to ask you to refer to the screen for the quality. So I just take a minute to remember the cases. I would, yes, we'll write the cases here as well then. But uh, we'll just do three groups. Case one, the university bachelor's degree on this side. The Red Cross certificate, that's the one that does a badge in the middle. And we will do the MicroMasters by a US university on the left. You don't have to stay at the table you are. Um, this might be a bit small to read, but we put all the quality criteria on one grid on the screen since we couldn't find a printing for you. So that you could hopefully work with it here. I appreciate it's not ideal and thank you for the patience on that. We'll give you 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'll ask you back for each group, somebody to present how you think each of these three credential types could be improved and whether, let's say, this quality matrix gives you an idea of the strengths and weaknesses of these different credential types. Uh, does that sound reasonable? Yes? Then to work with us. And I will write the...